Hey, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, no matter what time it is. Hope that you, my friends, are having another amazing day. My name is Carl Freund. I am the CEO for Kenneth James Realty, and today we are going to be talking about seller leads and how to generate, hopefully for you, a lot of them. I'm gonna give you all my secret sauce, but there is a fee for today's show. That is simply like and subscribe, maybe a little bit of comment. Uh, I'm gonna guilt you into this. I do have heart failure, and my dying wish is to help as many people as I possibly can, including you, and many people that you may know in your office. Please take two seconds, like, subscribe, share this thing, let's get the word out, and I'll give you literally everything that I know. Uh, and so if that's not a guilt trip, uh, I don't know what is. So let's get right into it. Look, subtle leads have always been kind of this mysterious thing where people don't really know how to generate subtle leads at scale. By the way, if you wanna learn how I generate over a thousand buyer leads every single month, pop out right here or link in the description. And I'll give you all the secret sauce on that as well. Again, like and subscribe, dang it. So uh, a couple of things. Number one, hands down, and, and there's gonna be a lot of commentary around this, the easiest way to generate seller leads is finding buyers. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but guys, look, I started doing rentals. I, I know a lot of other agents that are very successful that also started doing rentals. It's an easy way to start building a network. If you, if you don't have a huge network, maybe move to a, a new location, I'm gonna give you all this, this stuff here to, to help you out with that, but honestly, one of the best ways to grow your network is working with renters, working with buyers. Eventually, they will turn into sellers, just kind of the way that thing happens. And so, one of the things I do too is I generate a lot of buyer leads at scale. I'm gonna say probably about 50% of those, maybe a little bit less, are actually going to be in the market to sell as well. It's gonna be a dual-ended transaction, and being licensed in five states really helps with the relocations and stuff like that. So, something to think about. Uh, that goes without saying. New mandatory stuff, let's get into this right away. Things that you should be doing every single day, if not every single week. Hammering on expired and canceled and for sale by owners. Look, it's not fun, but you need to actually schedule time in your week, every single week, time blocking out, to be doing mailers and phone calls to these people. And by the way, I really like the older expired stuff and the older canceled stuff. The reason being is that it, it, they still need to sell, right? And so there are services out there that will scrub these lists for you and give you stuff that's on the DN, or not on the DNC. And these, this is not a paid testimonial or anything like that. These are services that I actually use and pay for. It, it's just, it is what it is. RedX.com. I like the data. The interface is very easy to use. Uh, a lot of good data on there. It is limited in some MLSs, just a, a heads up. It's not a lot of MLSs allow access for all of these. Land Voice is the other one I've had a lot of success with in Vulcan 7. Very similar data. Um, you're gonna get several emails, uh, phone numbers, obviously property addresses, everything like that, and see if it's been relisted or not. And then they do scrub that against a do not call list. So I do, I do like this data. Let me give you a pro tip that's not on here. Um, one of the things you can do, and this is a pro tip, this should be down here in like the super advanced section, is that you can get all of this data and run it through a company like Co Realty Resource, or if you can get enough numbers out of here, you can do what's called basically a customer match. Take that data from these data service companies and you can upload what's called a custom audience inside of Facebook and you can start running Facebook ads against that. Pro tip, um, we'll get into it maybe a little bit down here and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Uh, for sale by owners. Guys, it's hands down the easiest way to convert real tangible listings that somebody that they genuinely need to sell like right now. For sale by owners have been a great uh, source of business for me for a long time. You know, my conversion ratio is probably out of conversations, one out of 15, I'll actually set an appointment and I'm closing at about 80%. Uh, so if I have, you know, 10 appointments, I'm probably walking with eight listing agreements out of that. So kind of give you some metrics. Uh, not that I'm hands down the best person in the world for sales, but I've got 23 years experience and I can close pretty dang well. So that should be a good reference point for you. Other thing, circle prospecting. So anytime you get a listing or even a rental guys, go out and do a little bit of circle prospecting. Again, you can get information here uh, from coleinformation.com. And by the way, I'm gonna leave links for all this stuff. Not paid links, I'm gonna pay for this stuff. I'll leave links down in the description for you. Cole Information, I like them a lot. I do spend, it's called Cole Realty Resource. Um, I do spend quite a bit of money on them. I think it's about $1,000 a year for the data. 100% worth it because I can do things like circle prospecting. I can really get down and, and do something called being omnipresent, which we'll talk about here in two seconds. But you can pull neighborhood data in a radius or a neighborhood or whatever it is and start picking up the phone saying, hey, look, I've got a listing at 123 Main Street. Do you have a buyer? Do you know anybody that might be interested in moving into the neighborhood? Because a lot of times 
you know, it might be the in-laws, it might be grandma and grandpa need to move in the neighborhood to take care of the grandkids or whatever it is, might be a really good opportunity to strike up a conversation and maybe ask them. I always ask, by the way, it doesn't matter if it's a buyer, a seller, a person at Starbucks, do you need to buy or sell any real estate in the near future or do you know anybody that does? Leaving with that question at the end of every phone call or every conversation will dramatically change the scope of your business. And so ask for the sale, guys. It's very, very important. By the way, we do have a nine week sales course. I'll leave a link down in the description. It's free. We did it last year. It was a great resource for you guys. And it really gets you the mindset of how to sell properly. And there's a method for that, right? So calling about sales professionals and being a professional, you gotta sharpen your skills. You should be you know, working on that skill. It is a skill that perishes, unfortunately. So if you're not selling all the time, that skill does diminish. Practice your sales skills. Obvious, but not a lot of people do it. Why? Especially here in Phoenix. By the way, I'm very casual today. It's the most casual you'll probably ever see me. It's 116 degrees in Phoenix today. Do I want to be outside setting up and tearing down open house signs? Probably not. But here's where I'm going to get into something called omnipresence. Being omnipresent is so critical to your success in building a personal brand. This is July 2023. Probably one of the most difficult times in the last 23 years that I've seen for agents. However, this might be the single best opportunity you've ever had as an agent to build a strong personal brand. There's a couple different reasons for that. Number one, there's, I think the stat was in the first half of 2023, 60,000 agents, roughly about four and a half percent of the, the whole general population of real estate agents have exited the industry, okay? So that leaves a lot less people to you know, compete against. There's less competition right now for things like marketing, which would be Facebook ads, Instagram ads, billboard ads, TV ads, which we'll talk about down here in just a little bit. When you have less competition, the prices come down. And so keep in mind too that as people exit the community, exit the industry, there's a void there. And my question to you is, are you gonna be the one that falls out or are you gonna be the agent that fills the void? And so people that are building strong personal brands, which is, honest to God, this is the best time you'll ever have in your career to build a strong personal brand for a very little amount of money uh, and a lot of work. But guys, start getting into this stuff. So being omnipresent, I want you to think about this. Let's run a scenario. Um, I'm in Phoenix right now, so let's say I live in Arcadia, which I do, and I, I work in Old Town Scottsdale, which is probably about five miles that way. And on the way home, I see a billboard, and then I pull into the driveway, I get out of the car, and I go into my mailbox, and I pull out a piece of direct mail, and it's got your advertising on it. And then I go to the grocery store later on that day, and I'm pushing one of those dang shopping carts, and I'm either checking out, or I look down, and there's this guy's mug on my shopping cart. Right? And then I'm going home and I'm scrolling IG or Facebook or I'm doing things like looking at Hulu or YouTube and then I see your advertising again. So now I'm like, yeah, this agent is probably the expert in my neighborhood. I'm just guessing because I've seen their billboard. I've now seen their direct mail piece, which I forgot to put up here. Direct mail is a big part of this. I've seen their Instagram ad. I got a connection request from them on LinkedIn, which you can do, right? Because you can pull the information for Cole Realty uh, resource or coalinformation.com, get email addresses, and then send them LinkedIn advice, being the, the local expert, uh, neighborhood expert. There's so many things you can do here to build a strong personal brand. But a lot of agents aren't taking advantage of this. It really frustrates me because there's so much money out there. We calculated, I did my company meeting yesterday, going off subject here just a little bit. And I had asked the agents, I said, how much volume do you think we did in AR MLS, which is the Arizona Regional MLS, which covers a big part of Maricopa County, all Maricopa County, or Phoenix Metro. I said, how much business do you think, if we added up all the sales last month, how much do you think that was? And the answer was, you know, I got a lot of answers, 50 million, 100 million, 250 million. The actual answer for that was over $4.4 billion, which is insane. And so when you talk about maybe, you know, the amount of commissions that are paid out, it was in the hundreds of millions of dollars if you take 5% of 4.4 billion, average, two and a half and two and a half. Uh, and you guys are struggling to find 10 Gs a month. There's a disconnect there. And it's because a lot of agents aren't investing into their business, either time-wise, energy-wise, or money. And I'm gonna ask you, please take my advice and spend a little bit of money. And Gary Keller had it, he nailed it like 20 years ago with that book. And he said, red light, green light. You know, so when you close a commission, green light, let's spend some money. 
You're getting tapped out, red light. Stop spending money. A lot of agents, their income goes like this. It's up and down and up and down and up and down. It's so frustrating because what happens is they start prospecting, then they get a couple prospects and they're showing houses and they're doing listing appointments, then they stop prospecting, right? And then they get caught into this cycle where their income literally is just unpredictable. So if you want to have predictable income, that's what I'm asking you. You have to time block and you have to spend real time on this stuff and practice your sales skills. You're, you're in a sales job, legitimately. So you're gonna to have to figure this stuff out. By the way, you're gonna want a CRM. I didn't put it on here. I use Follow Boss. I pay for it for my agents. I think it's an outstanding tool, the way the integrations work with our website, which is Sierra Interactive. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description to that as well. Guys, you have to have systems that you can generate leads at scale, right? The little one-off referrals here and there, the repeat business, which obvi is obvious, that's awesome. But the problem is if you want to build a strong personal brand and you really want to keep in touch with a lot of people at scale, you're going to need to be organized. You're going to have to have a good, robust, solid CRM that you know and that you use inside and out every single day, day in and day out, seven days a week. I'm asking you to work seven days a week. It's not a huge ask. Even if it's two or three hours on a Sunday, five hours or 10 hours on a Saturday. Not that much in perspective, right? Because a lot of you guys take Mondays and Tuesdays off. I know it because I watch it. Let's talk about some advanced techniques. Offers.com, not a paid testimonial. I use them. I spend about $600 a month. I get about 30 leads. The leads are decent, right? They're motivated sellers. So they've had some sort of life event. Now a life event could be things like a birth in the family, a death, uh, any kind of probate, um, notice of foreclosure called NOD, notice of default. Uh, some sort of life event there. Now, I know they kind of stalk social media, and I know they do basically you know, some kind of data parsing and, and data merge there to find these people and make sure that the, the, the information is accurate. It's fairly accurate. So they're gonna give you just a list. It's your job to do direct mail, to do text messaging, or invite them to an open house, or to you know, really solicit the business and see if you can maybe do a CMA for them. That would be the best thing to do. What I do for that, honestly, is I take, I go to cloudcma.com. Again, not, none of this stuff is paid. Cloudcma.com, giving all my hacks. And I run a CMA for them. It's very easy when you do cloud CMA. I make sure that the price is within a range that makes sense. I'll be, again, I'm, I know these areas. And I will use that UP, USPS, the postal service, priority envelope, and I'll send it to them. And so it's like less than 10 bucks and then they get a package in the mail with a CMA, you put your business card in there, you put your resume, because remember you're applying for a job, a little cover letter would be nice, something like that, something that they're gonna recognize next time they see your ad. So you know, there should be a picture with your branding and stuff like that on it. All of you should have a logo by now too, by the way. I use Fiverr.com, my logo is 50 bucks. So giving you all these little tools. Use offers, use this data, start prospecting. Treat it like a sales job every single day. So hey, say, look, every week I need to make 150 contacts, now whether that be through expired cancels for sale by owners. By the way, a contact is not a dial and left a voicemail. A contact is not sending a DM. A contact is not sending a text message. A contact is a conversation. So there's seven days in a week. I'm asking for 20 conversations a day. That's it. It's not that much when you break it down. So please take my advice and start doing these activities. Scheduling time, time blocking. Paid social, I'll probably do a whole course on this. I've done courses on this in the past. I love IG and I love Facebook even more. The traffic on Facebook is substantially better when you're looking at a real estate audience. Other industries definitely lean on IG a lot more. It does scale, or I'm sorry, skew to a younger audience. I like Facebook a lot because I can really target and the traffic is a lot cheaper than IG simply because there's so much traffic uh, competition on IG right now, a lot of competition for their attention. Facebook has, you know, this traffic is still there and there's this void. There's less competition on that advertising platform. So I'm really leaning heavily into Facebook right now. In the past two years, I've spent over $200,000 on Facebook and Instagram ads. I'm gonna say probably 70% of that, honestly, is on Facebook. I can get you exact numbers uh, if you guys are interested in that kind of stuff. I'll run a whole nother course. How's that? I'll obligate myself to run another course just on the IG and Facebook advertising. Google PPC. I've been doing Google PPC for a little over five years now. I have closed hundreds of millions of dollars in buyers and sellers on Google PPC. 
I'm not gonna give you any uh, referrals on this. I used to give referrals out to a guy uh, and I no longer give them out. There is a course on udemy.com, U-D-E-M-Y.com. I'll put a link in the description to the guy that I actually got a lot of this education from. If you can figure this out, you can make a ton of money. Again, a thousand buyer leads a month, I'll put a pop out right here, uh, is what I'm doing on average currently. A thousand buyer leads a month in one market, just in Phoenix Metro. Um, a lot of traffic on Google. The other thing you can do here is you can do Google Display. There's a caveat here. You have to spend about $50,000 before Google will allow you to do something called a customer match. We're gonna go a little bit pro on this here for just two seconds. When you start spending a lot of money on advertising, and I've spent millions of dollars, you can start to actually do something called a customer match. You're gonna get the information for a neighborhood or a zip code or whatever you wanna do. It's not cheap, but you're gonna get it from coinformation.com and then you're gonna do something called a customer match inside of Google, which will allow you to advertise to Google's customers or prospective customers at a very cheap rate when you're doing Google Display. It helps you build a brand. By the way, this is lead generation here. This is building a brand. I need you to understand at a very deep level that there are two distinct types of advertising. The advertising that a lot of agents do is something called ego advertising. I call it ego advertising. That is where they buy the biggest billboard in town that they could find. They slap their face on it and say, call Bob the realtor, right? That's not what I wanna do. I wanna do something called lead generation or direct uh, advertising, which is, or direct response, which is this. It is Google PPC. It is putting advertising out there that I want somebody to take a very specific action, whether it's calling me or sending me an email or a text or clicking onto my website and then filling out a form. That is going to be hands down your best ROI. I do not want you doing ego advertising until you're making or netting 250 to $300,000 a year. Now, depending on what your market size is too. Like if you live in the middle of Iowa, you know, uh, you know what I'm saying here, right? So don't do this until you've got everything else figured out. I'm telling you that the ego advertising can really, really hurt your budget. Do not expect to build leads doing Google Display. It ain't gonna happen. Nobody's clicking on your ad. I can just promise you that. But what it's good for is brand recognition. And so understanding how all of this ties together, it's called omnipresence. Being present all places at all times. That's a really, really good way to do it. And by the way, Google owns this other company called YouTube. You can use the same audience and advertise to that same audience on YouTube. So let's kind of skip down here. This is the pro stuff that we're talking about. YouTube paid in organic. I realized very, very early on that YouTube is my friend, right? It's where you're actually seeing me literally right this second. People are moving away from traditional cable like Cox or DirecTV or Comcast, and they're moving into something called OTT. Um, OTT is simply services like YouTube, Hulu, Sling, uh, Roku, any kind of streaming service, okay? And you can actually advertise on those services. Hulu's got a decent platform for that. I haven't, to be honest with you, tried a lot of the other platforms. I know that Matt Petrovich, who is my CMO, I actually have a CMO, he's really dialed in on that kind of stuff, the OTT stuff, I'm not. I can tell you for a fact that we do spend probably about 22 or 2,500 hours a month just on streaming services. I don't know what the ROI is, but I can tell you one thing, YouTube is crushing it for us. Okay, so what we did was we actually made, like I wanna say over 100 videos of individual neighborhoods inside the Phoenix Metro area. And so what we did was a very simple script. You show up in the neighborhood and say, hey, my name's Carl Freund. I'm an agent that specializes in Arcadia here in Phoenix, Arizona. The reason why I like this neighborhood so much is this, this, and this, okay? A very, very simple script. Guys, you can do it with your phone. I don't want any excuses. The camera that you're looking at me through is like eight grand with all the lighting and everything set up. You can literally use your iPhone and get pretty dang close. Or Galaxy, I hate to say it, it's actually better. I own both. Um, so, a couple different things. Using the paid stuff on YouTube, please don't expect ROI right away. You have to send that traffic somewhere. You're gonna have to have a landing page. So very important to understand that the traffic that you generate on YouTube is gonna have to go somewhere. If it's organic or if it's paid, you're gonna have to send them to an LP, I'll call it a landing page, AKA a website for that community. So for example, if I'm advertising Arcadia and I wanna be the agent known for Arcadia, I should probably have a website that specializes in Arcadia homes for sale. Just throwing it out there. 
By the way, on your website, I'm probably hands down one of the best guys for SEO and real estate. We're crushing it and we're competing with, against Zillow, Realtor, Redfin, uh, Trulia. We're, we beat Trulia in the Phoenix Metro area uh, in terms of web traffic here. So guys, there's so many little things that you can do to really, really boost your traffic and generate a lot of leads at scale and you can repeat this over and over and over again. Going back to the streaming services, the Hulus, the Slings, um, the Roku and stuff like that, Again, I'm not super familiar with it, but I know that if you wanna be omnipresent, there are services and there are companies and there are individuals out there that absolutely specialize in those OTT services and you can absolutely crush it. Guys, if you have any questions, comments, I would love to hear your, your feedback on this video. Put them down in the comment section. I answer and reply to every single comment. And you guys can reach me uh, very easily on IG, just Carl underscore Freund. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in. It genuinely means the world to me. Again, my purpose here, is to help people just like you absolutely crush it in real estate. I've done everything the hard way. Please don't do it that way. Please take my advice and do all these things and put systems into play. And don't play small, by the way. Uh, there's so much money out there that, you know, it would really, really blow your mind. So again, thank you for tuning in. I genuinely appreciate you. I love you. Can't wait to see you soon. Take care. See ya.